Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap uh, live trading webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. This is the advanced education uh, that you get with Bookmap. Uh, typically, the way we've done it is uh, it's only for those subscribing to Global Plus. Uh, since the new year, or just before, uh, we started opening this up to everybody as we were testing things in here uh, and um, uh, in Discord. So uh, we kind of liked it uh, and, and uh, continued to move forward with it, offering it for free. So um, anyway, that's uh, uh, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, and uh, a uh, nice uh, benefit for uh, a lot of traders in here. Uh, can everyone hear me and see my screen? If you could uh, just type uh, yes in the uh, uh, in the hashtag advanced dash webinar uh, room. Okay, it's under voice channels. Uh, so, you know, the way we've been doing it, you, you guys know the drill. Uh, we uh, are projecting the screen here uh, in uh, Discord, but then uh, uh, in the voice channel room, then the chat is where we're at, you know asking questions or you know keeping the discussion going here so yeah thanks uh, ap and thanks fabio uh, sound is good uh and uh, yeah doing well thank you uh, fabio all right so uh yeah uh, just a little bit of information on the education uh, that you're getting here so uh, uh, the um uh Subscription to Bookmap includes complimentary the education. You get access to the educational course that's online. It's four parts. Uh, it is um, highly encouraged uh, to go watch that first before coming to these live trading webinars. Uh, and then in these webinars here, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., uh, it's live analysis. It's forward-looking analysis. It's not hindsight. We don't go over what happened. We go over what is happening. Uh, and then we give insight to where we think price is going to go. Uh, so uh, uh, that way you can apply directly what you've learned from that educational course in the live market. We're going to go through the same course content uh, to varying degrees of it, sometimes more advanced, uh, sometimes uh, a little simpler. Uh, all right, so uh, pretty nice uh, educational offering right there. But on top of that, uh, we have two different uh, traders. They will be trading live. Uh, it is in demo paper trading mode, uh, and it's only for educational purposes. Uh, but uh, we have um, a J Trader, a Stocks Trader, tomorrow, Wednesdays, every Wednesday uh, at 10 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, and then Thursday, we have Scott Pulsini, a Futures Trader, at 10 a.m. Uh, so the reason that we offer this uh, is uh, to complete the education. So we have the course. You can learn all about order flow and how to integrate it within your trading. We have the live forward-looking analysis uh, so you can apply what you've learned. Uh, we will go over also different ways of uh, strategizing or different setups uh, in the live analysis, but it's not a, a trading room. Uh, this is more about reading order flow uh, and understanding uh, where price might go. Uh, and we will also go through some trade management concepts uh, or considerations, but that's it, right? Uh, the live trading uh, from different traders, there are many different ways to trade. So uh, we have JTrader and Scott Pulsini. Uh, they, will, they will trade, and you'll get insight to exactly how they trade, uh, their setups, their way of looking at the markets. Uh, Bookmap is a platform. It's not a trading strategy. Order flow is not a trading strategy. Uh, and uh, so, it, you know, that's why we have the uh, live analysis. So you can apply all sorts of trading strategies to your order flow reading. All right, enough on that. Uh, let's go through some disclosures uh, and then let's dive in here. General disclosure, uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, let's jump in. Let's take a look at these markets and see what's going on. We looked at the S&P uh, yesterday. We'll continue again and a nice little sell-off again this morning here at the 930 cash open. Let's go, though, over what happened yesterday. Okay, so we, we've got a lot of volatility in these markets uh, and um, a lot, of, a lot of price movement here. So uh, you can see the uh, the move down here into high bands of high liquidity all the way down 4,300 uh, on down. 
Uh, so these were actually kind of key areas we were looking at yesterday. So I'm going to take a big step back uh, and we're going to take a look at um, uh, the higher time frame here okay, and see what's going on. All right, so this is the daily chart here. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we were looking at this area up here, up here for, for quite a while. Uh, and, uh, and then we see that we broke down through that area. And we broke down pretty severely. Uh, and uh, yesterday we were looking uh, for a break down below or into where there was buyers previously down here. Okay, this was an important area. Now, understanding the order flow on the daily chart here is no different than understanding the order flow even in the micro uh, structural levels. Okay, so we're looking at uh, where buyers came in and they move the market. Look how they move the market. Okay, this is a strong move on this daily chart. Here, let's just widen this out a little bit. Uh, and uh, so we would look for, down in this area here, we're going to start to look for uh, traders to start to cover. Uh, the, the, the shorts here, are they're going to start to cover down in these zones. Uh, and we're also looking for buyers to scoop it up down here uh, in these areas. So uh, that was our thesis uh, for yesterday's webinar. Uh, we were looking for the move back up, uh, and uh, we were looking for a gap fill on the on the hourly, etc. Um, and um, uh, it didn't happen during the webinar, uh, but we were open to that scenario and looking for it. Uh, it did happen later uh, in the session. And uh, look at that candle. Look at this candle on the daily chart. Look at that wick there. Pretty pretty amazing. Uh, just a massive massive wick. Uh, and you can see we're right back down now in these zones again. Okay. Now, uh, now, and why? Let's go over the order flow here on on this daily chart. Okay. We're going to extrapolate the same ideas uh, to the uh, uh, very small time frames or lower time frames. So we had the move down below here, uh, and um, look how it moved into that area here. Okay. Strong, powerful candles here on the uh, on the daily. All right. So. You know, big red candles moving this down so uh, the plunge into this area here uh, looking pretty good but again starting to look and look uh, wait for these uh, buyers to start to come in uh, and and move this back up now uh, that's the daily chart okay I mean we could have even moved all the way back up here and we still may uh, move all the way back up uh, to here uh, uh, where we drop from in this area here right so you can see today you know unlikely it's going to happen today uh, but tomorrow we have FOMC so today maybe we get some chop back and forth in here uh, we'll see uh, you know or maybe uh, you know traders are, are committed uh, to the downside and we see it break even yesterday's low we'll take a look at the order flow to give us answers uh, we still know that this zone though uh, is is uh, uh, pretty important okay any anywhere in here in fact we can kind of mark it up here and let me uh, let me put a uh, rectangle around it. Yeah, I'm maybe actually gonna just make make it like this here. All right. So yeah, we know there's buyers down here. All right. So that much we know. Uh, strong move and strong move right back out yesterday and we're right back down again here right so uh, uh, anyway that's the order flow here on this daily chart uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, hourly chart here uh, we were looking for uh, we and we drew up all these levels yesterday uh, as the, as the market continued to drop uh, and um, uh, we we're looking for you know maybe a move back up into some of the some of these areas here it was 30 uh, 4340 and and why because this was the high of the day here this is where it opened uh, this is these what we're looking at here is 930 to uh, uh, 415 uh, in terms of price action these are the regular trading hours uh, and then uh, uh, so you know potential move up here potential stop run above that area to where to the gap fill up here and we marked up uh, this 4380 uh, 84 I think I called it 85 maybe uh, and then we're also looking at well if you can do that maybe you can come up and spike up above this 4400 uh, and that's precisely what it did yesterday so 
understanding and keeping in mind the bigger picture here and then order flow that supports that bigger picture uh, is something uh, uh, that you know keep in the back of your mind uh, and uh, and look for these bigger moves because in days like you know uh, yesterday or uh, last week uh, when you get volatility you get these big moves uh, so uh, we want to be aware of them and uh, you know this is where you know you can make a lot of money you can also lose a lot of money so if um, uh, you want to kind of reduce your risk uh, the way to do it and it's just is beautiful these days uh, really big benefit for us as retail traders we can use the micro uh, contract okay we don't have to use the e-mini contract uh, and use a tenth of the size uh, with one micro if you want so it, you know what the the proper way to kind of reduce your risk here is um, reduce your size and then double your stops so reduce your size in half for example if you're trading one one lot for example or let's say yeah let's say you're trading one e mini okay we'll reduce that down to five micros uh, and then look um, at, at uh, widening out, doubling your, your stop size as well as your uh, take profits, okay? Just a suggestion um, uh, or a consideration. Uh, it's uh, uh, just a way to reduce your risk. All right, good morning, Alan. Um, all right, uh, a few things here um, I wanted to cover. Um, one is, uh, well, let's just jump right over to that. Uh, we... Um, uh, had a tweet yesterday uh, that uh, looked at the higher time frame. Okay, so uh, let's just zoom out a little bit here. Uh, and this was uh, uh, something uh, tweeted uh, uh, later uh, uh, later in the day here after this move took place. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at it in the in the order flow here. Right, you can see now um, uh, the um, uh, selling in here uh, and buyers starting to come in here. Big shift in here. Now the the dots. Uh, in this version of, of Bookmap here, they're filtered, right? There's di different filtering, uh, so you're not seeing all of the uh, uh, volume in here. You just you're you're filtering out for larger transactions, okay? And you can see it really really nicely in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, here is the move back up, uh, nice little move um, up up into this area here. So we're we're not looking at a whole bunch of data in here, um, but um, uh, just uh, uh, around specific uh, zones and areas in here, uh, take a look at the order flow. All right, so you can see the higher time frame uh, picture up here: six-month candles, uh, descending wedge pattern here, uh, and then here, uh, 12:25 East Coast time, uh, and then look at the break here. Right, these are the things we look at uh, in, in these webinars. Uh, we're looking at structure, market structure. Okay, just because it's a candlestick chart, you know that. It has its limitations uh, with structure, but uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, we're still looking at where order flow starts to break or where trading activity starts to break structure. If you're a, a, a pattern trader here, well, this is a nice pattern. Here's the break. Here you can see strong buying coming in. That's the key here. You see the, the pattern break, but on strong buying. Now, we don't have volume in here. We don't have uh, uh, you know a limit order book in here. Uh, to take a look at that's where we go to book map uh, and look at some of these levels all right so uh, uh, anyway some nice moves there uh, and I uh, wanted to go through that that tweet uh, and you might might want to take a look at our our, uh, our Twitter feed okay all right so that's that uh, and uh, yeah here comes some strong buying right now as well uh, and uh, yeah nice nice pattern here uh, in fact it, same same ideas here okay uh, in fact, we can even kind of mark it up uh, very similarly here. Uh, here actually, we, we have a few different trend lines to take a look at. Okay. And they've broken. Okay, All three of these have broken. Uh, and look at the strong buying coming in. Now, look at where it broke this structure here. Okay, so this if this is going to be back and forth in here, we you know looking for consolidation and then a break uh, to the downside for continuation. Well, here uh, what we're looking at is uh, uh, yep strong selling, okay, all the way down into high areas of liquidity here, all the way in here as well. We have iceberg orders in here, uh, and then um, uh, a little bit lower, and then you start to find our buyers come in, 
uh, and then they break the uh, the structure here. Now we're not out of the woods yet, okay? But it's looking pretty good. We see some strong buying coming in, uh, and we broke the top of this structure as well, uh, right here at uh, just just above 4,300. All right, so. Uh, and um, yeah, we might come back down and retest where we just broke from here, or we may even come back down and, and you know uh, plunge back down into some of these lows here. But right now, we're not looking for that. Okay, we're looking for buyers. Uh, and where might they go? Well, you know, we'd be looking at where sellers came in uh, and drop price. So maybe back up into this area up here. Okay. Now you can also see in your profiles, pretty nice low volume node uh, right in here. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this uh, 4320 area here. Not bad, not bad. All right, and it uh, looks like that's where buyers want to take it right now. Uh, and uh, we look for also where is there's li liquidity in here. Okay, I actually like it a little bit higher here, uh, 4325. Uh, it's kind of the upper range of that uh, low volume node. Uh, but uh, well, let's let's mark up the uh, uh, zone here. Okay, so. Uh, around 15 on on up to um, I don't know what is it 24 something like that 23 uh, and um, yeah so uh, anyway uh, that's one scenario here and it's a likely scenario okay, it's a likely scenario we see buyers come in buying strength here okay so uh, we're in a in a smaller uh, structure at the moment okay you can see here and it's still being supported Okay. And in fact, we can break it. Uh, we can break the smaller structure. It can come back down to here, like we said, a pull back here, stop people out, and then have buyers come roaring back in to try to reach back up into this our zone here between 15 and 25 or 23. Okay. So a few different scenarios to take a look at. And uh, I'm still going with the buy side here until we see something different, until we see structure starting to break or massive di uh, distinction here in order flow. Okay, so here they're going to test the structure. Okay, maybe test back down to 4,300. Okay, or are they going to buy off of this uh, this trend line here? And now the trend line, I don't I don't give a hoot about. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's it's structure that matters. Okay, it's it's understanding what value what's the value uh what pe what traders think of this instrument at this time and that's what's that's what creates structure okay? and that's what's important okay so here's our move into 4300 now we're breaking our, our trend line all right so likely we'll get our move back down into uh you know 91 down here or some somewhere around here okay And then I'd be looking for buyers to support it down here. Now we'll see, but that's the assumption, okay? But uh, uh, there was a trader last last week or maybe a couple of weeks ago um, uh, that that was saying, well, you know, yeah, uh, the, the analysis is nice uh, in here in these webinars, uh, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's like, well, I'm 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 looking for the move down to this area here. Okay, and I'm looking for the order flow to give me the hint to the move down into this area here. Okay, um, but uh, I'm not making a call down here, not at all. Uh, I think that would be very irresponsible. We want to see the order flow when we get down here. That's what we want to see. All right, so uh, that's what we want to read, uh, and then we're going to look for a, the, a, go through a few different scenarios um, uh, and look for the. Um, uh, what might happen all right so we can see that uh, actually we didn't even get back down to here uh, we just went below the swing here uh, knock some stops out you can see the stop runs uh, and you can see buyers coming in immediately okay so this was another scenario I'm sorry I kind of missed that one I should have gone over it uh, we see it all the time so let's let's go through a few different scenarios on the pullback in here uh, just to just to clarify all right so uh, strong move out a pullback, strong move again, pullback. Look at the pullback here. See how the pullback came to where they bought and broke this this microstructure? Okay, is this clear? Okay, see see the the small structure here, and look where they came back and retested. And we look for buyers to support it at that point. 
and they did. Okay, uh, especially up in here, uh, you can see the buying supported. Okay, we even get another pullback here. That same idea. Now there's not much structure in here, but look at the pullback here to that area again. Now we see the buying came in, but it, it, it failed to make a higher high. It failed to make even an equal high. And we and then we started to play around with, or sellers started to play around in this area here, and they dropped it. They dropped it below this swing, and they also dropped it below this swing. Okay, but then buyers came roaring back in here. All right, so uh, a few different scenarios on the pullbacks, depending on the strength of the move. And this isn't um, this doesn't work all the time. I mean, it's just um, uh, something to look for uh, in the order flow in the different scenarios. Okay, strong move, shallow pullback. Okay, followed by another strong move. Where might these pullbacks go? Well, we look for small little clusters in here. Uh, maybe uh, let's just zoom in there. Okay. Oh, I'm in drawing tools. Okay. I'm still in drawing tools. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So strong move. Okay. But look at this area, little area of consolidation. And then another strong, or not not so strong, but it, another move. All right. So there's a couple of different areas for pullbacks. One is here, and you can see it already did that a couple of times, and then it and then it went higher. The next one would likely be around here or maybe here. See the structural break? See the pullback break? Return back to where it broke from here and continuation. Okay. So these are the areas to consider. Uh, for your uh, and let's just draw some lines in here for your pullbacks okay uh, hold on okay here and here all right and if it can really get uh, down there we'd be looking for down to here all right so now let's zoom out and let's, take, let's see what the market did. Okay, our three lines. And this line's a little, little crooked, so sorry about that. Let's make it a little straighter. There we go. So see how we can kind of look at those little zones in here? And these zones matter. This is where bookmap can be really helpful. These zones really, really matter. Uh, you can see how the market uh, uh, reacts to them, and also went below the swing here. Okay, and then uh, we well, there is a little bit of trap volume in here, or or you know, sellers down here return back to it. Didn't even get back down to the lows here, and buyers come in. Uh, so anyway, uh, the point here uh, I want to make is on these pullbacks different ways of looking at the pullback. So we just explored a few different areas in here where we might look for a pullback. Uh, another one that's a little simpler to look at, okay, instead of looking at some of the nuances in here, um, I would I would really encourage you to look at the nuances in here. Uh, but, uh, uh, and here's our move guys looking for 15. Um, and then uh, I think we can get back up even to 23 up here. Okay, the liquidity though is at 15, right? So we're looking for that to test, test first. Um, so the pullbacks, again, um, strong move, sl shallower pullbacks. The shallow pullbacks, it might be to here. Okay, and let, let, me, uh, let me delete some of these lines now uh, yet again. Okay, edit mode, delete, delete, delete. Okay, so look at the swings though too. Uh, and uh, a lot of times on really strong moves, you'll get a pullback maybe to this first little swing, just a little bit be below it here, uh, it, but uh, that's it. And then you get the strong move back out of the area. Okay, this one pulled back a little bit further. It went back, back down below this swing here, and that was it. Okay, hit, hit some stops. You, you can see the stop run down here, uh, and then the buyers came right, right back in. Okay, now we miss this as I was explaining uh, some of these pullback areas in here. Uh, but look at the liquidity that came in now. 
they they're supporting it buyers are supporting it here uh, on the bid uh, and they traded into it too sellers traded into it and transacted into this area here uh, and um, the result of this here was we found more buyers back up above this area and we got the nice breakout okay so now we're looking for the move into thir uh, 15 which already has transacted and then we're in back into our zone here on our higher time frame uh, which is up in here okay so we're looking for next area of high liquidity well it's they're here at 20 now and they're up here at 25 as well okay so let's zoom in here and let's see if uh, 25 or, or 20 can transact I imagine these guys are probably going to get out of the way um, but uh, let's see high liquidity on the on the bid here at 16 a little bit more okay they actually stayed in the book wow look at that see 21 here see that liquidity 300 800 contracts here pushing this or this like wind at our back here okay it looks like sellers might go for this actually we'll see okay so lots of demand here all of a sudden popped in changed everything it's one player has like 800 and something contracts in here our large lot tracker see that little white line right there is showing this is one individual actor holding the mass or vast majority of the liquidity here now this guy's going to pull uh, I bet if if uh, uh, sellers try to take them on here okay there's even people front running this area now too and there's our move into 25 okay we were looking for if we can get back up and through there we're thinking 23 that's our line but we have liquidity up here at 25 okay and we're still they're still buying still buying so let's see if we can get up to 30 now okay there's no reason to get out of this yet okay we go with the trend until we see something different and there's nothing is still strong here we're not even getting pullbacks here okay not yet Any questions on some of the pullbacks? I mean, there's, and, and this is um, what we, um, uh, you know, one of the, we, we <laughs> hold on a minute here. Let me have a, a sip of coffee. <laughs> Good morning, David. Um, all right. So uh, what uh, I mean to say here is this, if you're a pullback trader, uh, you're looking for, uh, you know, buying on, on a retracement. We just went through several different ways of buying on retracements. Okay, find the one that, you know, find the area that the, around these levels in here that we just outlined. Find the order flow around those levels. Okay, and then look for it. Wait, wait for the, the order flow to tell you what's going on. You can see it here. Now, in hindsight, it's easy, right? Right here. And it even pulled back on that several times here. Once you see this come in, though, and once you start to get these buyers up above, it looks like it's going to at least test back up to here at 10, at least, right? And then likely at 15, and then uh, we're looking for maybe we get up, we're kind of gnawing through this up at 20, and they thought, well, okay, well, maybe, maybe 25 is where that liquidity was. Okay, all of that has transacted, as well as 30. 30 has also transacted right up here. Okay, and this guy is still in here bullying the book. Okay, one now look at look at he's even followed by a few other bullies in here. Let me duplicate this column. And I'll just to show this large lot large lot tracker. Um, this this comes with the Global Plus subscription. Okay, we're just gonna look at bars only. See the little white line in here? Okay, that's the large lot tracker. So everything to the left of that, this area here, is one individual actor who has that liquidity. Our order book or our, our algo can detect that. So here at this price level, we have uh, one player dominating. And there's a couple other smaller players coming in here uh, as well. Could be the same guy um, as well. Who knows? Uh, we just know that uh, there's a, they're holding the majority of the liquidity at those levels. All right. All right. So okay, no no questions on the uh, um, uh, pullback <coughs> uh, strategies. These are you know uh, considerations. Okay, they're not recommendations. 
um, and uh, uh, just different ways of looking at um, developing trading plans for yourself. Okay, order flow trading plans. Okay, this kind of detail that we just covered, you just you're not going to see it in your candlestick chart. You know, you're not going to see it in your footprint chart either. You're just not. You're not going to see this down here. Uh, this kind of uh, detail here. Right, and that's why we drew up these lines because we looked at some of the detail in here. All right, so uh, start to understand order flow at some of these levels. Uh, you're going to get just, you know, optimize your your entries in some of those some of those areas here. All right, so anyway, point made. So many different ways to enter in here on these pullbacks. All right, let's see if this bully means business here. It looks like uh, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, still more buying in here, but see how we're making lower highs and lower lows here. So I'm looking for the sellers to try to trade into this guy down here uh, at this uh, uh, 21 level here. Okay, a lot of buyers just, just popped in here. And here's the pullback to that area here. So we're gonna let's, let's continue on this with uh, with pullbacks. I, I kind of like this discussion. All right. So another entry in here. Now this one's I I don't like it. Um, I, and I'm not much of a pullback uh, uh, a trader. Uh, the the reason being is um you know I I start to see this in here and I I'm I, it almost screams like they're gonna move it. So I'm looking for taking some profit out up here at this at the swing or where it trades into liquidity or I like to front run that liquidity and get out some. And then maybe I'll buy on a pullback as well. Okay, But I'll hold, I'll move my stop up, uh, I'll reduce my risk uh, because you can see it in the order flow here. And uh, you know, this is my own weakness as a trader that I know I have, I have some FOMO, fear of missing out. But I start to see this um, it's is it is it it's fear of missing out maybe but it's also um, I have statistics or I have experience around it okay I've seen we've seen these moves so many times so this fits with the way I like to trade so it's not maybe necessarily a weakness it's just how I trade right and now I've adapted to way a way to take advantage of that Right. Other traders, they like to see this unfold, then they look for the pullback. Okay. Now, what what I don't like to do is um, look at the volatility coming in here, guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, nice move. There we go. Look at this. So we got something just happened. There must be some news or something here. Okay. This is a nice strong move, guys. Looking for 43.40, maybe 43.50 here. Okay, that's a lot of volume in here. Now, look for the pullbacks here. Okay. So we might get upended here. It might be just a strong move and a stop run here. We have icebergs on the other side. So this might be just to uh, get people going the wrong way uh, and then come back down into this uh, uh, 43, um, uh, 21 area here. Okay, but that's a strong, that's strong buying. Now, it's a really strong pullback though too. Okay, our buyers supporting it here. Okay, well, they're supporting it down here. So let's see if the sellers trade into it. And let's see if this guy means business. There it is. He means business. He just got filled. Look at that. Great. All right. So if we can get buyers back up above this area here, looking for the move back up. And let's see if we get it. Let's see. We need buyers up here. We want to see the order book support it. This would be a, this would be kind of a, a, a false or a failed breakdown. Let's see it. Let's see it. Buyers up here around 22. 22 and a half. Nothing yet. Nothing. Nothing shaking. Yeah, more sellers continue to hit the bid. Stop run. Okay, supporting it at, at our, our level here at 15. Okay, they were here earlier. They're here again. And that just transacted. Okay, and they bought again here. They bought again. Okay, now 43.10. Look at these sellers on the offer here pushing it down as well. Supply up here. Pushing it down. So let's see if we can get down to 10. 
So this was this was a kind of false advertising up here. Okay, this is a false breakout, and then the breakdown. Okay, now since this was a deep pullback in here, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's a different it's a different thing. You know, we're looking for buyers to support it, especially on strong moves. We'd be looking for the next pullback to be here, right here. Okay, and then here. Okay, and then down here. So we got a little bit of a bounce here, not much at all. You can see just a little blip here. Uh, and then you see the strong move right down to where it initiated. So now if it's if we go below where it initiated here, the sellers can take control, and that's what they did. All right. So then once we started to see that, we're looking for this, see if this guy is going to stay in. I'm surprised he stayed in, but he did. He got he, he got filled here. All right. And we can we can verify that. Okay. 821 contracts traded in this area here. Boom, right into it. Uh, good morning, Dove. They've been stopped above uh, uh, on yesterday volume uh, value area high. Okay, thanks, Dove. All right, looking for buyers back up above here, right here. See the see the where they, they transacted here, and let's see if they can move it back up to forty three twenty. Forty three twenty. Boom. Nice. Okay. So just just looking for that move for right now. Okay. And now the bigger move is above this guy up here at forty three twenty one. Okay. So um, uh, that might take a little bit longer here to to kind of unfold. So that gives us a little time to go back and and maybe go over some of these uh, pullback strategies a bit more. I'm surprised there's no questions on these pullback strategies. Even this pullback here, look look where it, look where it went. I mean, this stuff is I just I'm just fascinated by it. And, and like market structure is just it's so essential to understand. And and guys, if you if you if you have questions about market structure, um I, I really encourage you go back and watch part one and part two of our educational course because it's going to help you so much. Uh, this is what, look at the market structure in here. Okay, it's holding very nicely. Structure, breakout and structure, breakout and structure. Look at the pullback to the, the top of the structure. And where did it go? Structure up here. Pull back to this area now up here this this consolidation here okay, and there's reasons why this unfolds like this there's there's several reasons okay I mean this is where this is where the sellers came in uh, if people are trapped up in here they're going to be sellers again up here uh, if there are buyers up here uh, there are also sellers that are, that are going to support this move okay they're, they're going to uh, come in and uh, defend this area here and sell again And this was a wicked, this is a really wicked false breakout here uh, to the upside. Okay. Well, anyway, it, you know, uh, on, on moves like this in here and, you know, they're, 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 it's a false breakout. It's advertising that, uh, oh, it's a strong move. And uh, uh, yet, you know, you can um, take a small loss on, on, on moves like this. Okay. If you got in here and then you started to see it down in here and you start to see that order flow come in, get out. And you can even consider reversing, okay? Because sellers are taking it back down below that area here, uh, and then looking for that uh, a 21 to, to trade, and then that was it at that moment. If we got sellers below it, we're looking for it to go lower. If we, I was looking for the buyers above it. So another kind of a bash up here, another bash down here, and then back up into uh, maybe the the mean uh, uh, up here. Uh, somewhere somewhere around this area around 26 or so okay wherever the value area is up at the, up in this uh, uh area okay so anyway uh now you can see the pullback uh 
Oh, here we go. Let's see if we get our buyers here. Okay, and then a move back up to uh, 30 here. Uh, 20, well, we said 20, 26. Uh, this is the first stop, but the liquidity is up here at 30. Okay, nothing yet. Let's see, we're getting a pullback here. I don't know if I'll be able to draw this fast enough. Okay, buyers above it, and then 20, 22 and a half. Let's see, we need buyers up here at 22 and a half. Okay, Alan, you want to take a look at gold? All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look here. I, I really want to go through this uh, kind of uh, understanding some of these pullbacks um, on, on a pretty good uh, pretty good rant here. Here are our buyers, guys. Let's see the move here. Let's see if we can get back up. First our, is, you know, value area uh, up in here. So somewhere around this kind of 26, 27, but then uh, 30 uh, as well. Okay, it's still, it's, it's struggling. It's struggling to break out. We're back in the range here. So be careful, very careful on this. Okay, this might be a false breakout, and then it could even come back down to to ten here. Okay, we'll look for it. We'll look for the order flow, but primary scenario is there. You know, we're looking for them to break out back up into twenty six and then thirty. Okay, sellers below 20 would be the, uh, uh, look for the move lower here. Okay, and that's not unfolding. We're getting our buyers in our primary scenario. Okay, and there we go, 30, great. Okay, now we're back to a strong move again. All right, so are they gonna try to go for 43.50 up here? I don't think we got there yesterday. No, we did, yeah, we, we went to 44. Um, so, uh, Yeah, let's take a look at our pullbacks in here. Okay, look, looking for a pullback to maybe this area here first. Boy, it's, we're not even getting that. Yeah, we're not even getting that. Yeah, I, I would look for the pullback to here. Uh, it, it was just shy of it. See how it went just below this swing here? And that was it. I guess you, you could also look at, yeah, I mean, this... There's a couple little areas in here, like right here, and there's liquidity down there, uh, and then also where it, where it kind of this is a flag like a flag pattern here basically. But and I don't care about the flag pattern. I care about the order flow. Strong move, a little bit of a pause, followed by another strong move. The the second strong move initiated here, okay, and that's where the pullback actually came, two or three times in here. Okay, that's the subtlety. Okay, deeper pullback here. All right, let's see if we can get a, m a move back to about here. Pull back to about uh, 20 or 31 or so. Maybe 30. There it is. All right, now, are we going to get buyers out of that area? Or are we going to go a little, looks like a little bit lower, maybe 27. Okay, back to this area here. Let's see if we get our buyers down here now. Okay, this is where the strong move took place. Let's look at our micro, our market structure as well. We could even come back down into where it broke out here around 25, 26. Okay, so now we're going to look at the order flow around those areas. Okay, we're getting buyers back up here. Not convincing, no. Not too convincing the order flow here. Okay, a little bit better. Yeah, not not convincing. Uh, don't like it. I, I'm just I don't see someone taking a stand here. There are sellers trying to take a stand, followed by buyers now taking a stand. Okay, there we go. So uh, kind of a crazy little move there. Uh, again, this it's this pullback below these little swings, okay, and then buyers back up above it here. Okay, and then now we're looking for our trend continuation. Forty, uh, and then we like we like that fifty area. So let's, looking for forty. Okay, pull.
pullback, so we'd be looking for maybe below this swing, maybe to about 34. Okay, and then we'd be looking for buyers to support it. Okay, there we go. Okay, are they going to support it here? They should, and then we should get back up above here, and we should see buyers come in and then go for 37 and 40 again. There we go. Beauty. Okay, see, look at how fast this is moving. Okay, they, they flipped the book here, or, you know, kind of. Um, not really a book flip, but uh, uh, it filled here, and then they came in and supported it immediately uh, on the bid here at 35. Okay, still, still looking for a 40. Okay, and uh, let's see if we can get our breakout here. A 40 on up to like maybe 45. Beautiful, beautiful move. Okay, there we go. Still looking for uh, 45 and then looking for 50. This is strong volume. Looking for 50 on this one. Okay, big strong moves here. Moving the market, moving the market away. Trying to move it back up into these areas here. Okay, shallow pullbacks on this. Okay, there's our pullback. Okay, looking for buyers back up above it. There we go. Now, they should be able to move it here. Let's see it, buyers. Back up. Yeah, they can't. Let's see it again. Let's see if there they go. There they go. All right, so let's look for our 50 now. Yeah, this is kind of tricky, tricky trading. It just keeps on breaking out slightly. This is a strong move, though, so we're going to go with that. Uh, we're just looking at some back and forth in here, looking for buyers up here around 44. And then the move up into 50. Okay, there's we're still bullish here. A beautiful pullback. Okay, and uh, looking for buyers back up above 42, about 43. And not yet. Okay, the beautiful pattern here. There's not much selling down here at all. So I'm, again, looking for a 42 and a half, 43 area buyers. And then jumping in. Okay, so not yet. Still, still back and forth in here. And now if we get buyers back up above 40. Okay, there they go. There they go. Right there. Right there is where we're looking. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is where I like to get in. And I like to try to get back up into some of these areas. The first area would probably be about 45. Okay, and then I'd be stopped out right there. I'd give it another shot. You know, I'm looking for this move to work immediately here. I have my reasons for it to work immediately. Okay, again, jumping in. Probably, uh, a little, I want to see a little more in here. A little more buying. I want to see distinction like this. Okay, there we go. See, see, the, see the little double bottom in here? Sellers, second leg, no selling, getting some buyers in here. And we're right back down again here, but uh, we, we still didn't, 
it was a nice little move up into here. We didn't get our buyers up here, though. Okay, we did not get the buyers up here. And this is what we need. All right, let's see if we, we're looking at kind of a higher time frame trend line, I think, in here, somewhere around here. All right, sellers, sellers take, trying to take control here, actually. So this is another kind of, this is a this is another wicked move in here. I, I'm actually still looking for the move back up into 50 here. Um, uh, it's, uh, we really got to see an order flow shift out down here, though. And here we go. Back in the back in the range. Okay, break down below. I mean, this is wicked stuff. Break down below the range, back in the range, looking for buyers again. Let's try to get back up to 42 and a half here. Okay, looking for buyers to try to lift it back up to yeah, 42 and a half. Okay, they're supporting it on the bid here. Just not getting our, our green dots yet up here. But we're looking for them. And we didn't get them. So let's take one more shot at it. Yeah, strong selling coming in. Okay. Now, even with the strong selling coming in, this is where this, this move initiated here. This shakes out so many traders uh, so many times. So the area to look at the order flow here is right around here, which is what, 23 or so. That's where this move initiated. Okay, Everyone goes starts to go short in here. They, oh, you know, they see a head and shoulders pattern, uh, you know, reversal pattern, etc. This is what matters, though, is the strong move. Okay, and then we look for the move like a, a pullback to, you know, below this area here and then buyers to come in. Okay, so let's see if they can do it here. And then the first move would be a back up to about 35. Okay, strong selling into this liquidity. Let's see if we get our buyers up here at 30. Strong selling here. So looking for a move back to 35. That's where they, they broke down here. So here we go. Let's see, let's see if we get it here. A cluster above it. Now, see, we haven't broken structure yet, but we're watching it here. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. The, the book is looking pretty good underneath here and they're pulling okay so it was looking good and now let's see if we get our buyers here book is still supporting it okay, want to see these guys at 30 get out of the way all right here we go let's see if we can get some buyers here no Not again either. Okay, we're back up here. Let's see a shift in the change in the order flow here if we can get it. No, nope, still, seller still hitting it here, hitting the bid. 
Okay, I'm still looking for these buyers up here at 30, uh, 28 and a half or 29. All right, all right. Yeah, not, that's not going to pan out. So going for the 20 liquidity down here. Now, we can start to take a look at our structure again uh, and what's going on in our structure. So we were looking for buyers down here. Now, there's one area that's kind of the last gasp here, and that is 20. Uh, let's actually take a look at that. Is it 20? Yeah, it's right around 20. Okay, looking at this kind of high volume node here. So we'll move back to about this 43.20. That's the last gasp for these these buyers. Okay, and we're we're already into it and and through it and through it. Okay, so we got there's got to be buying above 20 if we're going to move back up here. And we can see sellers are not they're not having it. They're they're taking it down. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, Alan, we'll take a look at gold. Um, this was kind of a misread on this one here. Uh, nice stop run, though, uh, down here. Uh, and continuation still. So, uh, yeah, looking for maybe 10. But, um, uh, you know, still looking for, you know, there's going to be, we're going to get some some pullback. Or this is, these are still kind of pullbacks in a strong move here. The strong buying that came in here. Okay. And our structure here. So it's still still possible, um, you know. It would just be open to this scenario, basically. Not trying to be stubborn about it. Not trying to be pig-headed, but just open to that scenario. It's a possibility. Okay, and what might that look like if that possibility starts to unfold? Okay, we look for the for those buyers to come in, and we look for that order book to support it. Uh, let's see. Nice move from the 812 contact contract guy. Okay, not not sure who that is, Kurt. Um, based on my experience, is there a point where, despite regular behavior such as pullbacks and buyers stepping in? Um, yeah, uh, slightly overextended. Well, I think it's, it's, um, the, the pullbacks, one of the things to look at for in a pullback too, um, it's, that's really important, um, is the volume. Okay. We're looking for low volume on the pullback. Okay. We're not, we're not looking at, we, we covered this some weeks ago, you know, several weeks ago, I think when we were still doing it in GoToWebinar, um, where we, we can start to look at the volume dots within the, um, uh, the pullbacks. Okay, we're not looking for heavy selling to come in. We're just looking for it to kind of move back down to an area um, on lower volume. Okay, I'm looking. I'm still again looking for buyers right here, right now. Let's see if they can do it. And then, uh, yeah, they have to get back up above 20 though. And there's they're not having. There's some strong selling in here now. It's moving this market lower. Yeah, the uh, the lo low volume here. I mean, so the high volume is actually here, right? So we, we can even cover it here, like on a, on a move lower. Uh, the pullbacks are actually, you know, we're looking for buyers to kind of up end. We're looking for reversal now, actually, on the smaller time frame. This is this is where, the, here, let's just take the heat map down here, okay? Um, sellers take control where, you know, where they're taking control here, and then here, and then here. Okay, there's more sell volume. Look at the dots. You can look at the bars as well. Okay, so now I'm actually looking for a reversal on a smaller time frame. And I'm looking for it right here again, right now. We just made kind of higher lows and, and higher highs in here. So let's see if we can get our buyers in here. And I'm looking for them to, to go back and retest these areas here. So back to 23. Okay, and I'm looking for them to could step in here. 
we're looking for in this zone here we're looking for more buyers at the top of the uh, top edge here and then we're looking for them to break it okay so I'm looking for that there it is okay looking for a little bit higher here okay so and and then I, I would take some partial profit now I would get stopped out yet again here okay at break even I'm looking for this to move right now and I'll give it a shot the order based on the order flow it should work I don't want to get tangled up if they this is a false this is kind of a low volume pullback and then they uh, and it's not it's not I mean this is pretty high volume okay it's starting to equal these areas here so we're starting to see something a little different now okay but before these are all like low volume pullbacks basically this strong volume is here okay and there, and we're getting pullbacks just you know to the top of the range here uh, and then it and it moves back down uh, to the bottom of the range okay we just didn't get any continuation on these okay so I am yeah, I'm seeing something now we're seeing something different though okay look at the look at this bar that's a lot of volume look at these bars over here or look at these dots compared to these so this is how reversals start to shape up okay so now let's see them come back up and retest this area here okay the buyers here they go we should get it here they should be able to come back up and retest this area and let's see if we get enough now to break it back up into our 23 okay understand the flow here look at just the volume here and understand this flow shift and change I'm glad I brought up this is a good point I'm, I'm glad this actually kind of went it went against us here uh, in essence because uh, uh, to start to cover the low volume pullback is another really really key point uh, to understand okay and now we're not seeing that is something a little different now okay so we got our move back up here and okay, we didn't quite get to 23 still okay and it's it's back and forth in here now Okay, like look at the volume bars look at the volume dots so it's kind of back and forth but there's this potential now opening for this this reversal okay now we're going to look at our order book and our volume to give us insight here volume looks good they should be able to trade it back up to 24 and 25 now i'd be looking for it here we go we should get it on this move on this rotation we should get it Okay, I want to see this book support it. There's our move. Now let's see the continuation. They should be able to break it here. We've got enough volume here to move it away uh, from this volume over here. It's overpowering it. There's our move. Beautiful. Okay. And uh, yeah, so now we just, this is kind of, this is different here. This is not a pullback. Okay. This is more like a, uh, on this time frame at least, on this smaller time frame, this is more like a reversal, potential reversal. Okay, so uh, yeah, we move back up to here uh, in this structure. All right, let's go revisit this again. Uh, I, I think it's worth it. Uh, uh, looking at low volume pullbacks. Okay, so strong volume is here. Strong volume, strong volume, pullback. Okay, not bad. Look at the look at the bars. Look at the dots. Uh, let me go through my um, uh, settings here on the volume bars. Okay, this is how I have it. I have it solid. I have it as volume delta, and I have the smart clustering. It is equal to my volume dots. It is exactly the same thing. So I I just hit the apply to bars here for the clustering, and then I use volume delta, and that's it. Okay, so my bars and dots should match. Uh, that's the way I like it, uh, and this isn't bad uh, on on the on the you know the cell volume in this little area here. But where do they go? They went down to to here, and that was it. Okay, it is still a low volume pullback. Okay, it still is. You can even see it in here. Look at look at the, we can draw up on the on the chart here. Okay, low volume pullback. Okay. We can even add in if you like, if you guys, those that like the CVD, okay, this can be really helpful. Low volume pullback. Okay, still more buyers up here. Okay, in that area, 
and then uh, uh, looking for them to come back, buyers to come back in and support it. All right, so even this move here, low volume pullback, strong volume. Okay, and then this move back down to here, okay, not much, not much, less. It's less volume here. Okay, so we look for the strong buyers to come in again. All right, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, so Fabio, I think, um, yeah, put that into the the, um, the mix, looking for low volume pullbacks. Let's uh, get rid of CBD. Okay, interesting. So we just got all, all we did was looking for that potential reversal. All we did was get back up here to about uh, uh, 25 or so. Okay, in fact, you can even look at that as being a, 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 a pullback, right, to this structure here and sellers in control. Okay, and, and here we go. So sellers should go for 4,300 then based on that. Okay, this potential reversal failed here failed hard and look where it failed okay it failed below our line here but uh, it failed below where the buyers came in to support it okay that's where it really picked up in here and they moved it away from that area okay tricky trading today very tricky now we have FOMC tomorrow um, and yesterday so you know I, personally like you know I, I thought the move yesterday was um, I was looking for it. Uh, I was looking for it due to these big moves down and big and below these areas down here. So I'm just I'm waiting and watching and, and for those those buyers to come in and and uh, uh, sellers to cover uh, and have to buy back. Uh, today is a little a little trickier I think. Uh, so um, uh, we have FOMC tomorrow. We've got our big moves, our moves down, our moves back up. Okay, but now we're looking at. Um, you know, some chop back and forth in here, All right? So you range bound traders are going to love it. In fact, you can see it on the 15 minute here uh, a lot better. Uh, look, look at the zone in here. The, up here, uh, we, op we open uh, today down here back in the range basically. And we open there and we're just chopping around so where where are we looking for buyers we'll look at down at the wicks down here okay, and we found them okay where are we looking for sellers we'll look at the wicks up here okay and then where are we right now right in the middle okay so i kind of anticipate the whole day to be kind of like this so looking for you know selling the top edge looking for bot buying the bottom edge look for also um uh, for example, this move here, we can even look at kind of a low volume or a pullback into some of these areas here, like this area. So we can see that they bought above it uh, and moved it back up into these wicks here. And they didn't, they weren't able to get it back above though, right? So look for maybe um, the, the swing, a move back down to, what is this, 42, 65 and a half or so, somewhere down here. Maybe they slightly break it and then look for buyers to come back in and move it right back up. Okay, so little little moves below some of these wicks, uh, and look for who's going to take control. Okay, if we see um, uh, lots of liquidity getting filled down there, uh, great. We see icebergs, great. Uh, we look for buyers to come back in and move it right back up into uh, these these previous range uh, areas here. Okay, these are different higher time frame strategies. Now we're going to look at the order flow to support it. All right, uh, let's see here. So lots of liquidity coming in at this 4,300 here. Yeah, how does that match up here with our higher time frame? 4,300 is right here. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, um, uh, I want to see it at, at some of the extremes. Right, I'm, this liquidity at 4,300 like, uh, is right in the middle. Right, so maybe we'd have to go down to a five-minute chart or something and, and, and look at it a little bit more of what's, uh, what's happening here. 
Yeah, I, I really, I, I don't like it. I mean, you can even see the move down, a little bit of structure, and then breakout. And we're retesting that right now. That's where 4,300 is right here. Okay, I, I'd be looking for, yeah, we can get a bounce off of this and come back up to about here, 43.26 or so, something like that. Uh, if it's really strong, we can get back up into here. Okay, but I, I'd be looking for sellers to try to tr tr take it back down to here, to be honest, uh, back down to where the buyers are. Okay, and I like, I like that idea of just breaking this one slightly back into this zone in here and then looking for the buyers to come back in. Okay. So now we're going to just we're looking at structure on the higher time frame and we're going to look at uh, order flow. Uh, something I want to cover from yesterday as well that I think uh, you guys will find um, uh, really helpful. Okay. So I took a screenshot of this. Uh, and um, the um, this is yesterday's action. Okay, it's the entire day. Here's 4 a.m. over here, uh, and uh, here's 10 a.m. This is when the webinar started. Okay, and we were looking for that move back up like this, and then uh, uh, we saw the move back down. And then once we started to see it, yes, we were looking for it to continue on down. But uh, uh, this is where we got our break down in here. Uh, why I'm bringing this up here uh, is I want to go over the stops and icebergs, okay, especially the icebergs. So we saw lots of icebergs, like 10,000 up here, uh, all the way up to about here. Uh, they're, they're getting filled all the way up to here. Okay? And then we can see that it starts to, they start to sell, you know, icebergs start to sell in these areas here. So... Uh, uh, just uh, here, let's just mark it up. So they're starting to sell in here as well. This is kind of giving us mixed uh, uh, information in here. Okay, nice move. The the move, the order flow, you know, ruled. It it it, it took it back up to uh, our 46.0 closed up here around 46.05 or 06. Uh, so nice nice move there. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the icebergs here, this is very, very different in terms of iceberg, uh, uh transactions uh, on com compared to what we saw. I mean, cause we have buying and selling in here. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Whereas what we saw here on the other, uh, uh and I, I keep pointing back to this area here. We, we saw this, uh, I think it was, um, I think it was, the, yeah, it was this move here, right below this little swing on the daily here. Okay. We, this is where we saw like 34,000 icebergs buying. Uh, and, uh, and and that led to five day, you know, um, uh, all time highs. Now the icebergs here, they weren't selling, they were buying. And, and there was no kind of like um, back and forth in here. That's different in your iceberg reading here compared to, uh, uh, you know, what we saw yesterday. So, yeah, yesterday we were looking for our move higher, uh, but the icebergs were kind of, uh, on the higher time frame, kind of conflicted, right? So, therefore, it makes sense that we're, we, we're kind of seeing some back and forth today. Okay, just extrapolating some of the knowledge uh, that or information that we saw from the icebergs. If we saw 34,000 icebergs uh, or 40,000 icebergs buying down here, I would, you know, bet um, we'd probably get a move back up here to about 44.85, uh, bottom of the range here. Okay, of the swing up here. You know, something like that. Okay, so uh, uh, just just to understand a little more context of icebergs. Okay, so let's take a look at icebergs today, for example. Okay, well, selling icebergs here. Okay, buying icebergs started here. They started here, and they bought all the way to the low. And then they started selling. Okay, very similar to yesterday, uh, in fact. So uh, uh, you know we see kind of this back and forth activity in here. Okay, makes makes sense, kind of like yesterday. Okay, after that after the move up. 
Okay, so where does that leave us now? Well, it leaves us right here in the middle. Okay, and we're kind of chopping around in there. All right. So, uh, yeah, we promised we'd look at gold here. Let's take a look at it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, here's our big move. Uh, yep. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, gold will do the, have these crazy moves like this. Uh, lots of liquidity getting filled all the way up. Uh, and uh, again, like let's take a look at the this here um, with the um, uh, the structure. Okay, here's our here's our consolidation and our structure. Here's where they bought. Okay, and we we can even see pullbacks in here. Let's just take the whole zone uh, out here okay here's our, our first pullback deep very deep pullback okay typically like we, like we were saying typically we look at probably the first pullback to be here somewhere around in here uh, around uh, um, 1849 or 1848 and a half second pullback you know, if it goes deeper, it should be probably around here, 46. Okay, if, and if it's a deep one, it's going to go all the way back down here. And then it could even get sellers down below that and and and, um, and go lower. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Let's just mark them up. Okay, first one's there. Second one is, yeah, somewhere around here, 1846. Okay, third one would be down here. All right. So what went unfold? There could be, if it's a really strong move, it could also be one here, underneath the swing here. It already did that kind of. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd be looking for sellers to try to take it through it. All right, let's zoom out. Let's take a look. Okay, well, it kind of did. I mean, at least it paused here uh, and then came back up and then retested back down here. All right, so yeah, uh, second second line here, it, they actually blazed right through it, okay? So it, it did pause here for a little bit, and then you can see the sellers came in and just, just took it right back down. All right, so anyway, this sell, buyer's in control here, okay? Now, look at the sellers compared to the buyers in here. Buyers are still in control, okay? Look at, look at the low volume pullbacks in here. All right, so we're looking for buyers to start start to take control again in some of these areas. We start to mark up our structure. Okay, you can you can look at uh, some trend lines. You can look at the structure down here. It broke. You see the buyers come in, uh, back up into this one first, looking for this one second. Okay, so if we get our buyers back again, I'm looking for a move back to about this 1851 or so. All right. Uh, let's see, in combination with your teaching seminars, do we also trade? Uh, yes, um, the, um, I'm, I'm, we, we may even start to trade in here. Um, the, the problem is just the timing. Uh, you know, the, um, the issue is, uh, during the webinar, yeah, you know, that's, that's the time to kind of go through the order flow reading, not the trading. Uh, and then I'm busy with meetings all morning long, uh, typically, uh, and then also in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, uh, there's, it's, it's, it makes it very challenging uh, to uh, uh, really focus on trading. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, uh, the reality. Uh, I, I'd love to be, I mean, I, I'm kind of envious. Uh, let me mention, uh, so Tom B., uh, you guys have been uh, attending his room, I imagine. It's, he's doing a great job. Uh, over there so uh, you know look for him to start streaming uh, and I'm kind of envious uh, you know he gets to trade I mean not he doesn't trade during his webinar well he he can't or during his his streaming he can on another machine uh, but uh, you know he's 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 in there uh, and streaming so you know he's he, he can take positions um, 
you will not show the positions. Okay, that's not what it's about. Uh, the um, uh, but he can take positions. He's got time. Okay, and he also has time to trade in the morning. Uh, and and I simply do not. Okay, so you shorted Amazon this morning. Order flow help you make decisions. That's excellent. I love love hearing this kind of stuff. I think yeah, I've got Amazon up. We can take a look. Um, okay, so let's see. Also, you say you don't read the news. Uh, doesn't make a difference in your trading. You know, it's an interesting point. Um, uh, I actually kind of like the news. Uh, the um, I think I'm just kind of I'm interested in it. I'm kind of fascinated by it. Um, I like the news. I was also trained by a uh, uh, a really good forex trader who traded the fundamentals. Extremely simple uh, technical analysis and very effective. And he's just looking at the news and and very simple levels. And then that's it. And I think it's a great way to trade uh, if if it, if it resonates with you. Okay. Another way to look at it though is look at like the way that Scott Pulsini, and this is kind of what I like to do, uh, is the way that Scott Pulsini looks at the news or events, big events. And a news event is a big event. Uh, uh, what is the reaction of traders? Because I don't I don't care if, you know, there's there's a bullish uh, there's a bullish, uh, um, uh, you know, report uh, sentiment report or like uh, CPI or something like this. I, I don't care. Like, um, uh, I care about the reaction to it. What do traders think of it? So you can see, like, we, we get a bullish uh, CPI, like, uh, you know, um, event, uh, and the market sells off, right? Inflation, well, you know, out of stocks, into, into bonds, et cetera. Um, whereas before that, you know, some years ago, CPI and, and it moving up, that was bullish. So it, it really, it, it, it matters on the context of even of the news events. And that seems so objective that it, it should be so simple, but it's not. It's the context, yet again, of the uh, economic environment on a much bigger bigger picture. So w w the news event, though, is what, it, you know, There's we're going to get volatility around that event. So we want to look at um, what traders think of the event. All right. Uh, that's uh, the way I at least I like to look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at your uh, uh, crypto, Victor. Um, you had a nice, uh, nice move, and oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, so yeah, I'd like to show this actually. Okay, so here's what you're looking at. Uh, <laughs> look at the look at the. So I guess your uh, mountain time is that right? Uh, cash open here, uh, and uh, move to the upside. Yes, Arizona. Okay, so yeah, move to the upside here, uh, up into these areas in here. Now, you know, you, you'd be look at the. I mean, the, you have to be a little careful in the open of, of some of these stocks. Like it's a big, big sell dot here. Okay, but uh, uh, you know, able to get, you know, buyers came in after that, move price higher up into high liquidity up in these areas here. But once we start to get back down below these areas in here, and you start to see those sellers coming in, the, the game is on. Okay, looking for the lows down here, pre-market. Okay, looking for liquidity. Beauty with stocks is you can look at these high levels of liquidity in here. Look how it came right down to it. Okay, um, I, I don't know. You can't really see in the image here the open uh, liquidity. I mean, you can see high liquidity in here kind of at pre-market. Blazed right through it, came back up here. And you, see, you do see high liquidity coming in here uh, up at this area here. Uh, but the the highest is down here right and then the sellers went right for it okay and talk about market structure i mean you can even you can mark up your your market structure here uh as well okay so uh uh they moved back down below it and you could draw a line across here uh and uh you know now it's trading in this this zone or this area down here and a lot of back and forth in here so great great trade uh, excellent trade i love it yeah, great, great reading of the order flow. Yeah, nice, nice work. Um, okay, so here's our gold. We're looking for the move a little bit higher here. If we can get back up, uh, it's struggling a little. It's doing it. It's struggling a little bit here, um, 
but uh, it did break this little structure here. Okay, and it's above it. So let's see if we can trade back up into this liquidity up here. Anyway, that's gold. Uh, how's our S&P doing? Boy, I really thought we were gonna, they were going to tag it at, at 43.50, especially on this move here, especially. Uh, and they just didn't. Um, now, that, that's my bias, right? There's a little bit of bias that came in there. there there's, there's some weakness in my, in my trading, right? I, I just think it's so important to be aware of your weaknesses uh, and your strengths uh, and then start to develop your trading strategy around it. Like, you know, I, I was rather convinced here. Uh, we see the buying coming in, uh, e even the move back down below here, buying back up above it. Great. We should, this would be a, a slingshot up into 43.50 here. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Uh, and uh, sellers come in and they, they, they nibble away at this. They break it below here. Okay, this is a, a, a critical area here for today. Now this is, we drew it up and we we're kind of looking around it. I can't remember what we said uh, around this area here, but we knew it was a critical area because of this big old transaction over here uh, that we were, that we noticed uh, earlier. Uh, and um, uh, and then that kind of became a, a pivot line in here. You know, buyers above it, sellers below it. Uh, and then, uh, and then, you know, I'm surprised we have not moved back down into 4350. Uh, as well, and now we see buyers back up above. Okay, so it's uh, didn't didn't tag the high liquidity at 4350, nor at 4300. Okay, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, thought for sure we'd get to 4300 here as well. Anyway, a little bit of bias in here. Uh, the the key here is don't have a bias. Let the order flow tell you. Uh, this is the easiest way uh, to to uh, find good moves. Just let the order flow tell you. Be objective about your reading. Okay, are buyers supporting it? Okay, then where should it go? Go through the scenarios. What would if if it's going to go there? What what should it look like? What's it going to tell you? Okay, is this a low volume pullback? Yeah, kind of, right? I don't see a, the buyers took control here, so. Let's see if we can get back up here to about uh, 40, about 32, maybe 35. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about pullbacks. I, I, I like it. Uh, they're supporting it here at 20, our, our 20 line again, back to 20. Okay, it's becoming a lot more convoluted now. We see some pretty heavy selling coming in here. So this doesn't really look like a low volume pullback any longer. You know, starting to see the selling add up in here. You know, another way to, uh, uh, there's a, a few different ways to kind of measure this, uh, your low volume pullbacks. Uh, I'm going to go over this and then I'm going to uh, uh, stop. We've been going for an hour and a half here. Um, so uh, usually we go for about an hour, right? Uh, many times we've gone about an hour and a half, but uh, uh, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, we got to uh, we got to um, uh, stop and uh, I've, I've got uh, actually a few other appointments to get to, um, and then look for Tom. Tom will be in here uh, soon. Okay, you know Tom. Tom has uh, you know he can go he can pop in and out whenever he likes. So there's not a set set time. So just be aware of that. Uh, look for the live button here uh, in the uh, in Discord, uh, and then uh, that's when Tom will begin. All right, so uh, I just keep your eyes open in Discord. Okay, so um, anyway, what I was going to cover here uh, is the um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, about starting to understand the volume within this area here. So you see how we we kind of changed our minds in here. Like yeah, this could be a low volume pullback here, because look at all the buying in here compared to the selling in here. Okay, even though it went down below this line here, okay, but then once you see the sellers come back in again here, it's like, mm, no, okay, something's different now, okay, and you can see sellers broke it here now, okay, well, we didn't see any kind of setup to take advantage of that, but we see the break of it, all right, 
Uh, and once you start to understand the order flow and some of these moves a little bit, a little bit cleaner, or start to anticipate uh, what might happen uh, due to uh, insights uh, in the volume here or in the order book, uh, then these moves, uh, you know, uh, look look for them to look for the potential for that scenario to unfold. Uh, the um, yeah, the way to look at this volume in here, there's a few different ways uh, to start to understand it. Okay, one way is to use this tool, which I like a lot, this zoom by drag tool. And we're going to just kind of capture where the buyers took control. We, we might be able to go even as far as here, you know, somewhere around here. Right. And then the, now let's, uh, let's zoom all the way to current market here. All right. Now we've got that within uh, our viewable range. Okay. Now we can look at our CVP because we're using the chart range in here. We can also, if you got the global plus version, you can look up here. And you can see, look at, look at the volume in here, plus two. So buyers are just slightly better. I mean, it's really equal in here. There's another way of, of measuring it in here, and that's to take your CVP column, right click in here, go to configure. Uh, you, can, you can look at delta, that's one way. Uh, kind of look at the, the uh, you know, buyers versus sellers. Um, but the, the way to do it here is to split out the data, okay? And start to look at um, buying versus selling in here, okay? And you can see it's very, very equal, right? So no, no edge there. Uh, we're looking for, like, you know, sellers or buyers to take control. And we're not, we're not seeing it. Okay, so a few different ways of measuring uh, volume within these areas for your pullbacks, your low volume pullbacks. Uh, SVP column, no, SV, SVP column is for uh, global and global plus. Okay, the, all of these columns are for global and global plus. There's no no distinction. Okay, the the big distinction with the with, between global and global plus are the add-ons. Uh, and the add-ons. Um, are this this large lot tracker that we saw earlier, uh, the uh, imbalance indicator, um, the um, uh, there's a, a strength indicator. Uh, they're mostly up here. Let's take a look. Yeah. So large lot tracker, order book imbalance, um, strength indicator, uh, and volume imbalance. Uh, and um, uh, the correlation tracker, I believe, as well as uh, the, um, oh, God, I used to know this by heart. Uh, <laughs> uh, since we're not doing the basics webinars any longer, uh, it's a little different here. Let me find, uh, let me find it here. Hold on. Okay, so we'll go down to pricing. Uh, and then we're going to scroll down a little bit further, and then we're going to see the comparisons here, right underneath it. Okay, and this is what you get. Okay, here are the add-ons here. Yeah, these are all the add-ons. Correlation tracker, absorb. Oh, the absorption indicator, sweeps indicator. These are two really nice ones too. Um, I, I, you know, if if you have global, um, you might want to just try global plus for a month. Um, just to check out these sweeps and absorption indicator, we'll do uh, some webinars on that. Um, really, really nice indicators here uh, that uh, around zones that are, are really important. Okay, uh, the imbalance indicator, large lot tracker, and strength indicator. Okay, I forgot about that though. Yeah, this is a part of Global Plus, the sweeps and absorption indicator. A uh, real, real nice one. All right, guys, sellers dropped it here. Uh, they're going to go for 4,300 on this one. They got to. I mean that's where the liquidity is here. So uh, let's let's see the continuation here. Strong selling, looking for strong continuation into 4,300 here. All right, uh, we'll end it at that. Uh, unless there's any questions here. Um, ah, uh, any videos on the Thinkorswim? No, there's not. Uh, guys, that's another one too that you might want to check out. Now there's no it, um, uh, no MBO data uh, from Thinkorswim. There's no uh, add-ons like I we just went over for Global Plus. Uh, just note that. Um, so you're not going to be able to get that. But what you do get with Thinkorswim are some pretty nice, uh, uh, nice things. Number one uh, is uh, 
uh, yeah, it's kind of limited. Like it doesn't have the trading. Uh, that's another feature you get with Global Plus is trading from the bookmap chart. That's I forgot that one. That was that's one of the most important ones. Um, uh, so you can't you can't trade from the bookmap chart either um, in uh, Thinkorswim. You'll have to use their interface for for entry and exits, uh, and um, uh, you don't get any of the add-ons, nor do you get the MBO data. Okay, so if you want those nuances or those those differences, uh, then you'll have to go with Global Plus, um, or or even Global has some of those features that they don't have. Uh, however, what you do get though, and this is huge, uh, is you're going to get your data for free. Okay, so all you're going to be paying for is like I think it's forty bucks a month for Bookmap, and that's it. So if you're looking for kind of a cheaper uh, version of Bookmap. Uh, that's about as cheap as you can get, okay? Because data is included, stocks data as well as futures data is included, okay? It's DX feed data. It's not MBO data, but it does have full depth of market, right? Now we don't have any videos on it. That's their thing. Uh, they're the ones developing it within the Thinkorswim platform. All right. So uh, yeah, some uh, different uh, options for you guys. Here's our move into 4,300. Looking for these sellers to take them on, trade into it here. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know um, after this move here. here. We're just looking for this move into this liquidity here uh, and uh, for it to transact because it, it, it didn't earlier. So once the sellers came in, we're looking for them to trade it into, into this area here. Um, but our higher time frame, like we kind of left off here, um, it's uh, it's really kind of all over the place. Uh, I mean, on our fifth or hour chart here, I'd be looking for buyers down here around 77. Okay, and in this chart here, actually, we might get a bounce here. Um, we we went below this little swing here. We went into this little area here at 4300, maybe a little bit lower, maybe around 93. Uh, somewhere around there and then look for maybe some buyers to come back in and move it back up but we're not looking for big moves in here okay now if we see the selling continue below this 94 93 area i'd be looking for the move back down to that 77 area okay all right so just some uh kind of scenarios on the higher time frame here and we'll look at the order flow to give us insights okay so nice move into that high liquidity here guys uh, and then uh, you can see some covering already starting to come in all right Uh, maybe you guys consider better pricing for MBO data. Um, yeah, the, the MBO is, um, well, it's, 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 well, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing we can do there. I mean, you have to have Rhythmic with that. They're the only ones that offer market by order data. So, uh, you, your M, M buds, you're, you're kind of stuck with that. We're all stuck with that uh, until everyone else can kind of catch up with Rhythmic. All right. So anyway, that's just the that's the reality right now. All right, guys, we got to go. It's these have been going way too long. Um, I'll try to keep them shorter for you guys, but uh, 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 look for uh, Tom to pop in uh, sometime here soon. Uh, he's been doing just a great job uh, and uh, guiding through uh, the um, uh, order flow. Uh, now you know Tom is looking at a, a very specific method. His method of trading volume profile. So if you're a volume profile trader, I think you'll really get a lot out of it, all right? If you're not, you're gonna learn a lot about volume profile in there, okay? So uh, look for that sometime later uh, and uh, have a good day, everybody. All right, yeah, thanks, take care.